take a look at human body systems. So we start with homeostasis. Homeostasis is the tendency of the body to seek and maintain a condition of balance or equilibrium within its internal environment, even when faced with external challenges. So what does that mean? Uh, an example of homeostasis is the body's ability to maintain an internal temperature of around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, regardless of the temperature outside. So it might be really cold or it might be really hot outside, but we are able to maintain 98.6. All right. Okay, so we have the need to be familiar with circulatory, respiratory, and immune systems. Let's talk about each of those for a sec. The circulatory system is an organ system that permits blood to circulate and transport nutrients such as amino acids and electrolytes, oxygen, carbon dioxide, hormones, and blood cells to and from the cells in the body to provide nourishment and help in fighting diseases, stabilize temperature and pH, and maintain homeostasis. Okay, so the circulatory system. So it, that all we're really saying there is that blood circulates to transport nutrients. It has almost the word right in it, circulatory, right? It's going in kind of a circle. All right. Immune system. The immune system is a network of cells, tissues, and organs that work together to defend the body against attacks by foreign invaders. These are primarily microbes, tiny organisms such as bacteria, parasites, and fungi that can cause infections. Okay. So, immune system is defending the body against disease. And then we have the respiratory system. The human respiratory system is a series of organs responsible for taking in oxygen and expelling carbon dioxide. The primary organs of the respiratory system are the lungs, which carry out this exchange of gases as we breathe. Right, so the respiratory system is essentially allowing us to breathe. Pretty important. Okay, there's those three. And then we need to know the nervous system. Okay, so we have these abbreviations here. CNS stands for central nervous system, PNS stands for peripheral nervous system, and ANS stands for autonomic nervous system, okay? The, and the autonomic nervous system is part of the peripheral nervous system. So the two big systems are the central and the peripheral. Okay, so let's go over these though. The central nervous system is the part of the nervous system consisting of the brain and the spinal cord. The central nervous system is so named because it integrates information it receives from and coordinates and influences the activity of all parts of the body. Okay, So our big part there, central nervous system, we're thinking brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system is one of the two components of the nervous system. The other is the central nervous system. So we said that uh, before. The peripheral nervous system consists of the nerves and the ganglia outside the brain and spinal cord. The main function of the peripheral nervous system is to connect the central nervous system to the limbs and organs, essentially serving as a relay between the brain and spinal cord and the rest of the body. Okay, so that last sentence is really the important part there for peripheral. Uh, it just relays between the brain and spinal cord, which is the central nervous system and the rest of the body. All right, and then we have the autonomic nervous system. It's a division of the peripheral nervous system that supplies smooth muscle and glands and thus influences the function of internal organs. The autonomic nervous system is a control system that acts largely unconsciously and regulates bodily functions such as heart rate, digestion, respiratory rate, urination, sexual arousal, this system is the primary mechanism in control of the fight or flight response. Within the brain, the autonomic nervous system is regulated by the hypothalamus. Autonomic functions include control of respiration, cardiac regulation, and certain reflex actions such as coughing, sneezing, swallowing, or vomiting. The hypothalamus, which is just above the brain stem, acts as an integrator for autonomic functions, 
receiving autonomic nervous system regulatory input from the limbic system.